So it's finally here. We're back on the WPF video series. Uh, let's jump right in and get coding. So a lot of you've been wondering where I've been. Uh, I've simply been busy with work. Uh, I released new software. We employed new people. Uh, we had trade shows. A lot's been going on. I've not really had any spare time. So I'm making my best to find time now and cut the series of videos down to mainly basics of C Sharp and this WPF series uh, with having a lot less time than I did before to try and focus on at least getting this series out. So again, I don't have much time today, but I'm going to try and do a little video for you on when I've spun up the code that obviously hasn't been spun up for a few months. Uh, the first thing it does is tell me my token's invalid and just says unauthorized and the user has to log out. Uh, so what we're going to do for this nice, you know, quick and simple video is to now automatically log the user out if their tokens expired. So it's sort of a, you know, a toe in the water back into WPF, get things going again. Uh, and just so we can start, you know, rolling some videos out and you guys know I'm still here. So with that said, let's just jump straight into code uh, and let's get back into the WPF project. So opening up the Facetta Word application, uh, you'll notice I've got Visual Studio 2019 at the minute. Um, this is just in preview at the minute, so I wouldn't upgrade just yet, uh, but I'm just trialing it out anyway. So coming back to the code after, you know, a few months of not using it, I open it up and the first thing we get here is server responded with unauthorized. Um, and then obviously you click OK and now anything you try and do uh, that actually works would um, keep throwing up this constant error because in theory you need to log out. Um, so instead of having this pop up constantly, uh, we want to really automatically log out for the user. So the first thing is to find out where this message pops up. So server responded with unauthorized, that's in our code of the uh, web request extensions, the display error if failed, which basically calls the server, uh, does some stuff, and if it finds that it's got a response that um, you know has an error message, then it will display the error message basically. Uh, and that's what this is doing here. So what we want to do really is to look at the response. So we could put a breakpoint here and we could look at the response when we go to the settings page and you can see we have a response back from the server and the status code is unauthorized. So we can use this as the detection of effectively what's likely an invalid um, token, an invalid login token to the server. So there's a few things here. Firstly, we could extend this method so that we have uh, more control and more function to do something because we never do anything with the response. Um, so, you know, we, we could do something with it, uh, but the thing is this is called via a response. So this is really only display error of failed. So if we just first look at where this is used, um, you can see we await a result of uh, a call, get the result, and then we use this to simply first say, well, uh, display an error, otherwise, uh, if it returns true, there was no error. It's kind of a, a universal handle to simply say if there was an error, then display it. We could dual purpose this, and I feel we should, to reuse this method to not necessarily display error if failed, but handle error if failed. And part of handling that error would be to either display the error or log out. So I'm going to press Control R R on this and change display error to handle error if failed. And then check the web response for results for any errors, displaying them there if there are any, or if we are unauthorized, automatically logging us out. And really that makes it a more useful one. And what we don't have to do then is go around every single place where we actually um, have this and try and find, you know, and, and constantly log out every single call. So instead we do it in the main call. Uh, so now we hit this with if the response isn't equal to null. So instead of a single liner now, let's wrap this in here. And uh, we can basically say if this is an unauthorized change keyboard, so I'm a bit slow at typing, uh, response. So if response dot status code is unauthorized, then automatically log the user out. Uh, so that would be in the view model settings dot log out async. So we can just 
let that do the work for us. Um, and otherwise, I guess, then we want to display the message. So really, we could move this out of here so that we can have that still as a single liner and this here as the else case, else display the message. And I'll wrap that in so it's a bit cleaner. And then we've also got to remember response could be null here, so if you just question mark it, then that will accommodate for that. Uh, we could also log it here, so we should probably uh, log it. Now, where do we put the tell it's been a while? The extension namespace is. Uh, just DNA logger extension. So it's just using namespace DNA should find that for us. Oh, okay. Oh, it's the logger I wanted, not the uh, namespace. I wanted to know where this logger was. That's the extension. So framework DI. Uh, so again, yeah, DNA should be fine in the logger. Okay, so why is it not doing? Oh, framework DI is static. We need to do using that's the one. Using static framework DI. There we go. Now we can do logger dot log, and really automatically logging out is not going to happen that often. Uh, it's not going to complain about framework DI. There we go. DNA dot framework DI. Uh, the logout automatically is not going to happen that often, so I'd say we probably want to log it as uh, maybe information. Yeah, I'd say general general error. I'd expect it to be a you know a generalized error. So we're going to log it as information, and we are going to let's just have a look at what I typically do with it being a while. Uh, comment wise, and so we just put log in right now. There's strings in, so we haven't localized them. Okay, so. Uh, logging user out due to unauthorized response from server. So we log it, then we log them out, and instead of the error message showing, it should log out. So if we run this now, we should hit here, and then the view model should handle everything for us, including changing page, because that's the, the benefit of view models. So this spins up. We've hit this, we're going to log them out, and we see the page, and then it logs us out. So that's exactly what we want. So now we're effectively logged out, and we can log back in uh, with a valid cookie. So if I just log back in to this, then we're logged back in. And now if I was to close and restart, we shouldn't hit the unauthorized response, because I've now got a, a valid token again. So there we go. So that's handled the unauthorized logging in and out. Um, and again, because this has been a while now, um, we probably want to update all of our NuGet packages again. So we'll manage them for the solution, and we'll just update everything. And then we can just do a quick check. So select all packages, update them, and then we'll rerun that this works. And it's always good to keep your packages up to date as often as possible. Uh, just don't update packages right before you do a major release uh, once it's public, because it can introduce bugs that you you won't find. But when you're in the middle of development, upgrade early and often to, to keep everything up to date. And that's it. You should also keep on top of um, warnings like this, uh, just so that your build list doesn't start getting full of um, you know, a ton of these. So some of them, like the shell one, is due to our um, transparent window thing. So right now, that's that's what it is. These exes um, are in because I want to break the developer so they could see what exception was there. So this, in this case, because we've got the the break, you can suppress the message um, like this to get rid of the warning. 
Uh, and then you can also comment as to why you are suppressing. Uh, so you would say showing or making EX available for developer on break. And then it just keeps that nice and clean. And again, it's an explicitly defined, this is why I'm not using it kind of message. Um, so that you don't just end up with, what you'll end up with over time is you just ignore warnings because there's so many of them and then you never look at them. So you want to keep these down as much as possible. Um, feature warning, I'll say for only. And are we in a different one? Oh, we've got to force it to use the new C sharp eight. Oh, has that automatically added it for? Oh no, it's restore, not enable. Typed it wrong, that's why. Disable and restore. Um, so let's see if we can get rid of these ones. Now the shell is not going to be able to get rid for now. Add fake assemblies, maybe I'll look into that after. So right now we've only got the two warnings, which is the shell one. Uh, but yeah, do try and keep these down as low as possible. Another useful feature that most developers don't realize exists, they probably type it but don't realize it exists, is if you have, say, to-do, and you type a bunch of to-dos, uh, like we have. Um, so we've got a bunch of things we want to do. These ultimately end up being another thing that just gets left, like this. We've got lots of to-dos appearing. Um, so really, you should go through and, and check your to-dos every now and then. But a good way of doing it, whenever you type a comment with um, some code and then a colon, um, what you will find is if you go to debug windows, uh, not debug windows, um, I can never find this one, view, and then task list. You'll find that this filters by, um, you know, these get added as tasks, anything with a, a colon. So we'll get into looking at these um, at some point in a video. Uh, maybe when I don't have much time and we can clean them up. Uh, but that's all there is to uh, fixing that little bug. And at least we've, you know, got back into um, the code a little bit and done a little bit of work. So that's the automatic logging out when a token expires. Uh, hopefully that was useful. As always, any comments or questions, leave them and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one.